Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Wednesday and happy Valentine's Day to all of you out there. Hope we're having a wonderful kind of middle of the week and really, I guess, middle of the month here as well. And it feels like February has really just blown on by, at least for me. I know a lot of people said January felt like it was three months long and so far February has felt like it's been a day, but I guess that's just kind of how time works sometimes. Uh, now, in today's video, uh, kind of getting back to the weather side of things, we do have a good bit to talk about, uh, including kind of a couple more snow systems on the way for sections of the east, uh, including folks in the Ohio River Valley and once again the northeast. Now, uh, since the last time we talked, uh, things really changed with the northeast, and I do apologize I didn't get a video out the past two days to kind of uh, update you on those changes, but unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as you all know, I am a student, and that kind of has to come first sometimes, and uh, it's been a bit of a hectic week, so I do apologize about that, but uh, really the forecast uh, in the northeast kind of got butchered by a lot of people, including myself. I'll be the first to admit it. I uh, talked about, again, in the last video, how it would probably be more of a Boston storm kind of into the Catskills and into uh, northern PA. But by the time all was said and done, really big cities like Philadelphia and New York uh, that weren't really looking at much of a snowstorm ended up getting some pretty impressive totals. So I'd love to hear from you folks out there in some of those areas that weren't really expecting so much snow uh, just a couple days beforehand, but that really ended up scoring. Let me know how much you got and uh, kind of where you're watching from. So again, definitely... Uh, uh, do that. Uh, now, I will also mention, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it, and as I just mentioned, of course, comment. Let me know what you got out of that snowstorm and kind of uh, what you're seeing out there if you haven't seen any snow. Here in Charlotte, uh, we're having a really nice day, actually. Sun is out right now, and uh, temperature should warm up pretty good today as well. So, uh, I won't complain. I know a lot of us uh, kind of here in the Carolinas have been hoping for some snow, uh, but unfortunately, this might be winter number two in a row that we go snowless. So, uh, we'll see, and uh, we'll talk about the pattern here in the future uh, throughout this video. Alrighty, now that's a pretty long intro, so let's go ahead and jump on into the actual weather side of things, and we'll start off with satellite imagery here. Uh, now you'll notice, again, across much of the country, things are quieting down a little bit. Now, just off the coast of the northeast here, uh, we still have this massive storm system, again, uh, kind of with this shrimp tail look to it here off uh, kind of the edge of your screen there. And uh, again, that is what kind of caused all that snow in the northeast yesterday, now bringing big time snow and even blizzard conditions up towards uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, seeing some of those rougher conditions. But back in the United States, again, uh, things are calming down a little bit. Now, I do want you to notice, though, back out towards the west, we've got a couple different pieces of energy. These are likely to cross the country and once again bring more snow here for a lot of folks over the next couple of days. And again, we'll talk about who exactly could see uh, some of those higher snowfall totals here a little bit later on in the video. Now, taking a look here at um, kind of radar imagery as well as our watches, warnings, and advisories. Again, things much more quiet than they were a day ago, but I do want you to notice, again, we do have uh, kind of some areas here of um, heightened um, unsettled weather. So we do have some winter weather advisories from Wisconsin back through southern Minnesota, through Minneapolis, back through South Dakota, and then back through Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Again, uh, could see some snow out of this, and even back into the mountains out west from uh, kind of, uh, you know, Olympia down through the Cascades, even into the higher terrains here of Oregon and even down into the Sierra Nevadas, could see some uh, pretty impressive snowfall totals over the next couple of days. And again, we'll talk about those totals here in just a moment. Uh, now, before we do that, uh, I do want to um, kind of uh, mention the overall pattern that we're in and uh, what exactly it's going to mean for the next couple of days. Uh, now, this kind of area off the coast, again, uh, off the east coast that is, that is the storm system that just brought that unsettled weather. And as we go through the next couple of days, again, that's eventually slowly going to work on out of here, but a couple new areas of uh, some low pressure are likely to form. One over the northern uh, Great Plains, that could bring some snow here uh, to a lot of folks uh, over the next couple of days. And then the one behind it, again, moving through the northwestern United States. And again, those kind of line up pretty well with where we had those watches, warnings, and advisories. Uh, so again, uh, we're feeling a little more confident in the models with these storm systems than maybe the last one. Uh, but again, things can always change, and especially later on down the road here, uh, once we get kind of later on into this weekend and into next week, a much larger trough of cold air and potentially an adjacent low pressure system could once again bring more snow, this time into kind of maybe the northern mid-Atlantic, Ohio River Valley, and into the northeast again. And uh, that one, again, we still have some pretty big time differences in the models to iron out, uh, but they've definitely come into better agreement overnight and uh, into today. So again, uh, a couple different storm systems we're watching here in the near future. All right, so we'll start out west here and kind of take a look at uh, what is on the way for you folks. And again, we've got a couple storm systems and uh, starting today, again, that big one kind of slowly working inland. Now, you'll notice this other storm system off uh, into the Dakotas and into Iowa. We'll talk about that one whenever we look at the East Coast. For now, though, I'm going to focus on this much bigger storm system that, again, is kind of uh, working on inland throughout today. 
Now you notice this is going into tonight about the time the sun is setting. We've got uh, big time snow falling here into the higher terrains of California, Oregon, Washington, and uh, rain at the coast, rain at those lower elevations. But either way, this is going to bring a lot of precipitation with it. So by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, again, a big shield of snow here through Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, Utah, still snowing back into the higher terrains of Washington, Oregon, and Northern California here. Again, really racking up those snow totals with uh, just good old-fashioned rain at the coastline and uh, kind of into some of those valleys. Now what's eventually going to happen here going into our overnight Thursday and into Friday here is that storm system is going to kind of break off a little bit. We're going to still have some leftover unsettled weather back into the northwest coastline itself, but a piece of low pressure going to again kind of break off across the Rockies here and this could bring another swath of snow here uh, into the northern Great Plains going into again overnight Thursday into Friday. You'll notice that works on through and eventually uh, works towards the east coast here uh, and that again could be that storm system that brings in more cold air and potentially snow into the Ohio River Valley, uh, northern mid-Atlantic and again potentially the northeast here before all is said and done this week. Now I will also mention here going into Friday morning as far as this model goes we still do we, excuse me we do still have some leftover precipitation here uh, with some mountain snow showers here uh, into the Pacific Northwest but things calming down especially into the desert southwest by this point uh, where much drier air should begin to work on in for our Friday. Now, snowfall totals out here, again, I think the real winners are going to be into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and then into the higher terrains of Oregon, Washington, and then even into Northern California there through the Sierra Nevadas that way. Again, uh, more than a foot of snow, not out of the question here for some of these higher terrains, but again, very elevation dependent here. So uh, if you're at the very highest peaks of the mountains, which obviously not many people are, but uh, if you are, a lot of snow, if you're kind of middle of the road here, uh, lesser totals than obviously as you get far enough down in elevation towards the valleys and into the coastline, just some good old fashioned rain out of this storm system. Alrighty, now let's talk about uh, kind of the East Coast here a little bit, what's on the way for us folks here, and uh, we'll start with this afternoon. Again, the real main player on the field is this small system, uh, but an important one back through uh, sections of South Dakota and into Minnesota. That likely to drop some snow this afternoon and eventually work on through here and also strengthen. So by the time we're getting into overnight tonight, about midnight, you'll notice we have a pretty well-defined system here with snow falling likely into Minneapolis, uh, up into northern Wisconsin with rain to the south of there as the storm is kind of pulling up some more of that warm air out of the Gulf. That will also help to bring more of a uh, kind of warm spring-like day for a lot of folks here uh, into the Southeast, Mid-Atlantic, and Ohio River Valley. Now we continue here into overnight uh, Thursday, again snowing through much of Wisconsin at this point. Uh, rain for I think uh, many in Illinois, I think Chicago, more of a rain event out of this. Rain for much of uh, southern uh, Michigan here, maybe even some rumbles of thunder, not out of the question here. Uh, again into kind of Indiana and Illinois, but to the north of there, a good, uh, excuse me, again a good pasting of snow out of this. Uh, especially into Thursday morning as we're waking up here. You'll notice snow still falling through much of Michigan into the UP of Michigan uh, with uh, rain and even some gusty winds to the south of there rolling on through uh, Indiana and Ohio here as we're getting into about noon on our Thursday afternoon. Now eventually we get this further ahead at a time, the storm system strengthens a little bit more and Thursday afternoon and evening this is working into the northeast now and now it's beginning to kind of tap into some Atlantic moisture here, uh, adding a little bit more precipitation here. Uh, the storm has deepened now below a thousand millibars and all of this combined could lead to a pretty good shield of snow here into uh, New York State, Vermont. Uh, back into uh, the sections of Massachusetts, um, into uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, down into the Catskills, the Finger Lakes, and uh, up into the Adirondacks as well, and even into northern Pennsylvania could get some pretty good snow out of this. Now, to the south of there, I think New York City, Philadelphia, southern New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, really just some showers out of this. Not too much in the winter weather department, uh, but again, areas north of there could get a good uh, bit of snow out of this. Some moderate snow, even isolated spots of heavy snowfall overnight Thursday here. And uh, by the time we're waking up Friday morning, that storm system now finally pulling offshore, but another one again on the heels. And this one, once again, could bring some widespread snowfall to a lot of folks. So again, an active pattern over the next 48 hours, and that will even last in to this weekend. Uh, now, taking a look here at um, some of the snowfall totals here, um, starting into the northern Great Plains. Uh, we'll start into South Dakota here. Again, this is including the first storm and the second storm. So the next 48 hours, uh, National Weather Service calling for a good half a foot of snow, widespread here, kind of into the heart of South Dakota, uh, maybe three to five inches here back towards Minneapolis, and then kind of one to three inches, uh, you know, into surrounding areas here into northwestern Iowa and into northern Nebraska could see some of that snow as well. 
Now, moving this into the Midwest, again, some snow into uh, Michigan and uh, Wisconsin as well. Again, this forecast from the National Weather Service, a good three to five inches through much of central and northern Wisconsin. The higher totals than that, even up into the UP of Michigan, uh, specifically the eastern UP of Michigan, half a foot of snow, not out of the question. Uh, same story here into northern Michigan as well, um, ex excuse me, at least uh, the peninsula itself here. Again, uh, some pretty good snowfall totals. Now, areas to the south here, again, Gary, uh, Indiana, down into Chicago and up into northern uh, Ohio. This storm system not really likely to bring much snow. Uh, and uh, The second storm system could, but this one, again, really more of a light rain event than anything else. Now, as for the northeast here, again, the real winners, I think, into upstate New York here, kind of into the Adirondacks. But even south of there, into the Finger Lakes and into the Catskills, could see a good uh, helping of snow, maybe one to three inches, about an inch or so, I think, into the Boston area, one to three inches, isolated spots, three to five inches into the higher terrains of uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. And even southern Maine here could get in on some pretty good snowfall totals, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, three inches, I think, here through much of the region. Now, areas further to the south, Connecticut, Rhode Island, more of a dusting to an inch or two kind of event, and even south of there into Long Island, Philadelphia, and much of New Jersey, not really much in the snowfall accumulation department, but again, a lot of these folks just scored a day or two ago, so uh, I think you'll be just fine uh, kind of uh, uh, being on the lesser snowfall totals here with this storm. Now, talking about temperatures a little bit here, again, a lot of warm air is getting kind of invected northward here through the country as some of these storms cross. And this afternoon, it's going to be a warm one. We're getting well up into the 60s through much of the Mid-South, uh, the Southeast, and into the Southern Great Plains. And tomorrow, that continues, even warmer temperatures, although uh, I will mention kind of a boundary setting up a little bit here in the central part of the country. So colder temperatures to the north of the Ohio River Valley, uh, but south of there through Texas, Tennessee, uh, sections of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, getting well up into the 60s. 60s isolated spots kissing the 70s here again as we really warm up tomorrow and uh, by the time we get into our uh, Friday here uh, yeah that is right three days out Friday sorry uh, that uh, boundary of cold air does sink south a little bit but again still quite warm here south of kind of the um, you know uh, what is this called a line sorry the line drawn on your map here so to the south here again through the Carolinas Atlanta Birmingham Jackson uh, Dallas Fort Worth uh, Little Rock, again, still getting well up into the 60s and isolated spots hitting the 70s. But as some of these storm systems kind of drag down some of that cold air on the backside here to the north, um, again, that could lead to some cooler temperatures definitely into the northern tier of the country. All right, uh, now that's, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of the first storm system. Again, there's another storm system after that one, kind of what we ended talking about there, uh, kind of working into the Ohio River Valley. And we'll start by taking a look at some of our models here. So we'll start with the European, and uh, here it is. This is Friday afternoon. You'll notice here's that storm system definitely getting its act together, bringing some rain into the southeast and some snow here. Uh, into the Ohio River Valley from uh, sections of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Eventually that continues to work eastbound here and by the time we're getting overnight Friday into Saturday, uh, again we've got a big block of cold air moving south catching up with some of this precipitation being brought inland by this low pressure and we've got a band or a swath of snow here uh, through Kentucky, West Virginia, potentially southern Ohio, Pennsylvania, maybe Maryland could see some snow out of this. To the south of there though I think Tennessee southbound, uh, this is really going to be just more of a rain event. Maybe even some rumbles thunder could roll on through with it. A couple isolated spots with some gusty winds, not out of the question. Uh, but here we go, waking up Saturday morning, still this uh, storm system moving on through, bringing a swath of snow through D.C., uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, southern New Jersey. You can see some snow out of this one. Uh, and eventually it kind of works on through here. And uh, then we just have uh, kind of this block of cold air working on in for the second half of our weekend. Now that was the uh, European model. The GFS is a little bit stronger with the storm system, but still a very similar track. And this is good because yesterday they were very different. Uh, today, a little bit more aligned here. And again, shows the same idea of a swath of snow here uh, through the Ohio River Valley with rain to the south of there through Tennessee, Alabama, uh, down into Mississippi, Georgia, Arkansas, getting some rain out of this. And again, same story here. Although I'll mention Again, the GFS is maybe a little bit stronger with the storm and therefore a little bit heavier with the snowfall uh, here into the D.C. area, uh, area, excuse me, West Virginia, uh, Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Delaware even, Philadelphia, southern New Jersey here. Again, a good swath of snow here with rain into the Carolinas. And again, they both agree after that, uh, kind of, that this cold air settles in. Now, one thing we will have to watch, and don't get your hopes up if you're in the southeast and hoping for snow, but there are signs that maybe uh, a bit of a southern slider here gets very close to kind of some of this cold air. 
Uh, now, right now, I'm not expecting anything out of this, but there is a chance that maybe they try to overlap a little bit and could bring uh, some areas that are close to snowfall here into portions of the Carolinas. But again, chances are just so low right now, but I just figured I would mention it anyway. Uh, and again, next week looks to start pretty cold for a lot of folks. Now, snow potential with this. Uh, again, taking a look at the European ensemble members. Here's that swath of snow from St. Louis through southern Illinois, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, and then eventually into West Virginia and Virginia. Overall, uh, the model here showing a big area of about one to three inches of snow. And I think that's a pretty safe bet. I would even argue isolated spots will probably get past three to five inches here. Uh, specifically maybe into the D.C. area and into the mountains of West Virginia, as well as back here into uh, the St. Louis area. Could see some isolated spots of higher snowfall totals, but either way, a good swath of snow here on the European model and its ensembles, and a very similar story now with the GFS. Again, a good swath of snow showing up here uh, from St. Louis all the way back towards D.C. and Baltimore. Again, watching that area for the potential for some snowfall here. All right, final thing I'll talk about here are temperatures. Again, this afternoon, it is going to be warm for a lot of folks. You'll notice a lot of orange and red on your map. But as we move this further ahead into this week, that orange and red kind of gets beaten down to the south a little bit here. And uh, by the time we're hitting Friday afternoon, again, a very warm spring-like day in the southeast and the deep south, but colder temperatures up to the north, slowly diving southbound. And I think by the time we get uh, kind of later on into this weekend, here we go, Saturday afternoon, those blues really take over and we're back to below average temperatures. Uh, compared to this time of year, so back to highs in the 40s and 50s through much of the southeast, uh, colder than that to the north here for our Saturday, even into our Sunday, likely even lasting into early next week before I think later next week, uh, all signs are another ridge builds back in and we could see some real spring-like temperatures here uh, about a week to 10 days out from now. So. Again, we've got this kind of wintry pattern over the next couple of days to get through, but after that, um, I'm still uh, kind of seeing signs of spring on the horizon. So maybe Punxsutawney Phil got it right this year. Definitely kind of feels like a bit of an early spring here uh, going into the end of February. But again, after that, we'll see what March holds. Uh, but again, next 10 days, a bit of a roller coaster. Going to be warm for some today, then getting cold again this weekend, then another big warm up next week. Uh, and we'll definitely watch to see how that plays with the allergies. I already know a lot of people that are kind of struggling with some allergy problems uh, with this pattern. But either way, we'll watch it and I'll keep you updated. I uh, appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great rest of your Valentine's Day. And I'll see you all tomorrow.